Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk exclusively about the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation and the risk metric that we use for the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation. So if you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Thank you guys for helping me get to 70,000 subscribers. On to 80,000, I guess. Um, so, you know, the, the risk metric here is, is one of the, this is one of my favorite risk metrics. It's the Ethereum Bitcoin risk metric. And the reason why this is one of my favorites is because it's essentially showing the momentum shift between the two crypto, cryptocurrency assets that are at the top, Bitcoin number one and Ethereum number two. And I think they're going to stay one, two for the foreseeable future. So with this in mind, we, you know, having having an indicator that can help us identify shifts of, you know, momentum shifts between one coin to the other, it can actually be quite helpful. And, and this one shows this is the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation versus time. Note that the Y axis is a logarithmic scale. And for those who are unfamiliar with logarithmic scales, the each major tick is 10x. Okay, each major tick is 10x. And then we also have this color coded by the risk metric and the risk metric just goes from zero to one. It, it tries to help us identify times of undervaluation against Bitcoin and overvaluation against Bitcoin because we do not fall on this channel for the narrative of this time is different. And on the off chance that there is a time that is different, I would still prefer to stick with a strategy that assumes that, you know, times really don't change a whole lot in terms of momentum shifts between coins. Of course, of course, you can always redefine sort of what the new normal is. But so far, I find that using something um, based on historical data and assuming that returns are diminishing and that, um, uh, you know, we're not going to vastly outperform vol historical volatility, then I think using something like this can be quite insightful. And the other thing too is that even though even though it, it, you know you know you might not necessarily time the exact top or the exact bottom, it can it can surely help. I think with momentum shifts in the market. Again, this is not financial advice. This is just something that I use. So what we're going to do uh, to try to break this down a little bit more, you guys know, we take the color out of it and we just simply look directly at the risk level on the secondary y-axis. So this allows us and you know, this enables us to I, more easily identify where you might want to say move into Ethereum, move out of Ethereum, move into Bitcoin, move out of Bitcoin. So the thing that I, I, I like talking about when I talk about this risk metric is there is a strategy for those out there that don't ever want to go back to fiat or stable coins, but they're just interested in trading, say, Ethereum to Bitcoin and Bitcoin to Ethereum, no matter what phase we are in the market cycle, whether we're at the peak, whether we're at the bottom, you guys know me, I want to go back to stable coins or fiat during the peak or what we what we think is the peak. But if you are of the of the strategy where you have no interest in going to these other coins, or other other, you know, stable coins or, or fiat at the peak, and you just want to go back and forth between Ethereum and Bitcoin, and your strategy is not to increase your fiat, but it's your your strategy is say to increase either your Bitcoin stack or your Ethereum stack or both, right? And so you just keep, you know, you, you go back and forth. Now, one of the things I should say, is that this is not an all in or all out approach. Okay, so when we talk about the risk metric, we cannot look at it like it knows identically the top or identically the bottom. So this is why I've often said that using it in a way to slowly scale in and out of assets is the best way, in my opinion. So one of the things we've talked about before, again, is doing something like this, where you 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 move into the asset when the risk is low, and then you move out of it as the risk gets high. Now, it sometimes can be somewhat um, uh, confusing if you if this is the first time you're seeing something like this, because you'll see that, well, there's peaks way up here. And then there's also some some secondary peaks, some lower peaks that, that, are, that are much lower than than the ones we've seen before that. For instance, the one in 2018 that took Ethereum to $1,400 had a peak that just went above 0.6 risk. And you might be wondering, well, how is that possible? Because we know that Ethereum went to around $1,400 during that time. So why would the risk level on it only be 0.6? Well, it's because this is the risk against Bitcoin. And Bitcoin was also just off a run where it went up 100x. So when you're looking at, say, valuations of, of one asset against another asset, it's also doing quite well. 
then it might, it's not always intuitive. Um, however, by approaching a strategy or by having a strategy like this, and you say, maybe you decide to slowly shift some Ethereum to Bitcoin whenever it gets to the 0.6 risk level. Okay, I think this is a this is what I this is a valid strategy that I use. Uh, this has already happened a couple times this year. We went to the 0.6 risk level right here, and then a few weeks, a few months later, right here, it worked out quite well. I typically just have a stop loss back to Bitcoin at that point at the 0.6 risk level to make sure that I'm essentially banking those profits that Ethereum has seen. And I don't want to get I don't want to my main concern is just I don't want my emotions to take over. I don't want to get too focused on well this time is different type mentality. Now, of course, one thing that you could do is you could wait for, you know, you could wait for the risk level to go much above 0.6 and, and you could wait for it to go to 0.65 or 0.7 and then maybe just set a stop loss at, at 0.65 or 0.6. I think this is a valid approach as well. However, if you get too um, fancy with waiting uh, too long, you know, there's no guarantee that we're going to stay above the 0.6 risk level forever. Right now, we're only around 0.5 risk in terms of the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation. So this would be more or less what I would consider no man's land if your strategy is simply between Ethereum and Bitcoin and Bitcoin back to Ethereum. Now, if your strategy involves fiat, then this this changes the game. But if, if it's just Ethereum to Bitcoin, I would consider, you know, 0.4 to 0.6, no man's land, probably good to hold, you know, a decent amount of both assets, though personally, I would hold more Bitcoin. Um, uh, but in terms of in terms of waiting for, say, a key momentum shift in the market, and maybe taking some profits of Ethereum back to Bitcoin or Bitcoin back to Ethereum. So Bitcoin back to Ethereum would be when it's you know down here at the 0.4 risk level, which we were in for a lot over the last couple of years. When we're back up here at 0.6, it would be the other way. So it would be um, uh, Ethereum back to Bitcoin. Now, some of you might wonder, well, why would I trade my Ethereum back to Bitcoin at the 0.6 risk level? Because this likely doesn't represent uh, I mean, this would not even represent an ether over a thousand dollars at the current Bitcoin valuation. Well, the point is to is and what I do is to dynamically DCA the cells. So instead of just selling everything here, which I think would be absurd, uh, especially because I, I really do think a several thousand dollar ether is on the cards over the next few years, what I what I would prefer to do is to sell a small portion of it. So what that means is. I scale it linearly, and so I would sell one tenth of my ether back to Bitcoin if following this approach at 0.6 risk, two tenths at 0.7, three tenths at 0.8, and four tenths at 0.9. Um, and that would be if I just simply followed the Ether Bitcoin valuation. I only traded from Ether to Bitcoin, Bitcoin back to Ether, and did no trading back to fiat whatsoever. So I think this is a good approach. It's worked out several times already. Um, you can see already this year, we, we've talked about this several times, and it actually went to the 0.6 risk level twice against Bitcoin. And then, you know, back when Bitcoin tested the 20 week moving average, we were talking about, okay, well, you know, this is the time to focus on Bitcoin accumulation because we know that if Bitcoin goes up, if Bitcoin goes down, or if it hugs the 20 week, Ethereum is very likely to just bleed against value, bleed in value against Bitcoin. Um, that doesn't mean we don't love Ethereum. It just means that's what the data suggests. And I don't like to fight the data. I like to just go with what it says. Um, and, and so from here, what I will be looking for is, well, can Ethereum make a run like it has done for the last five years around this time of the year. You know, we've, we've talked about it before. Sometimes it starts around mid-December. Sometimes it starts around early to mid-January. And if it does make another run, then I'm going to be wanting to look out for the wristbands as we scale up them, okay? And if we do scale up them, if we make it to 0.6 and, and it means transferring, say, one-tenth of Ether back to Bitcoin, and then we drop, so be it. If we go up to 0.7 and then it means selling another two-tenths, so be it. But the whole point is to bank the profits and to not get too greedy. Now, if you want, if you if you think this one is too conservative for you, another strategy, of course, is to make the sell band and the buy band different. So you could keep the buy band the same, but for the sell band, maybe you only start selling Ether to Bitcoin whenever the risk gets to 0.7 or 0.8 or 0.9. And that's the great thing about it is you can scale it to whatever risk tolerance you're okay with. And I see a lot of I see a lot of people out there. They'll they'll have these like all in or all out trades. 
they'll they'll make calls based on 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 you know traditional technical analysis or whatever. Um, but it doesn't really account for any, everyone's individual risk tolerance because it depends on you know it depends on how old you are, what your goals are. And, and one thing about the risk metric that I think is really useful is you can tailor it to your own goals. If you're, you know, if you're, if you're older and you're, you're, you're going to be retiring soon, then you probably would want to be more conservative and not, and not be too aggressive because there's always a chance we don't go back up here. If you're younger and, and you really see this as your opportunity to, you know, to really get ahead and you, and you just, you, you tremble at the idea of selling, selling any ether at, at a phase that we would might consider very early on in the market cycle, then you could simply just raise the risk level. Right. And, and this can be tailored to your own to your own approach. So, again, the risk metric is on the premium list. We still have the sale going on. And I've been saying that for a while, but we still have a ton of interest. So we, we still have the sale going on. Make sure you check out the sale in the description below. Uh, you get access to the risk dashboard, which is what I used to trade. We're going to have some more developments there over the next few over the next few months, probably. Um, you also get access to weekly reports, weekly premium videos the private Telegram alerts channel, the private Telegram chat room, and uh, a few other things, uh, some of the trading view indicators as well. So make sure you guys check it out. You can find the sale in the description below. Also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find in the description below. I hope this video has been informative to everyone. Now, if you decide not to join the premium list and you still wanna follow an approach similar to this, well then I would consider, you know, maybe just sitting down for a while and figuring out what metric will you use and if it reaches that metric, then don't get too greedy and, and just stick to it. Because when we're in times like this, when we're not going crazy in terms of the market, I mean, it's, it's up a little bit, but it's not, there's nothing out of hand yet. When you're, when you're in a time like this where you can think rationally and then stick to your decisions later, that's a lot better than saying, oh, I don't have a plan and I'm just going to later on decide what I'm going to do. So a lot of people had that plan back in, in the last market cycle and it did not work out well for a lot of people. So my main concern for everyone is I don't want people that are in the market, you know, and buying in 2018, 2019, 2020. I don't want you guys to watch the next market cycle come and go and to not personally benefit from it. So hopefully you guys enjoy the content. If you guys like the content, make sure you give the video a thumbs up, check out the premium list, check out the sale in the description below. And again, subscribe to the channel. Let's make a push now for 80,000 subscribers. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.